with Justin Kulik, the NDP candidate for uh, Kelowna Lake Country in the upcoming October 24th provincial election. Justin's in Vancouver um, doing virtual courses at UBC, so we are doing this virtually through Zoom. Justin, good afternoon. How are things in Vancouver? Good, good. A little smoky, but uh, <laughs> but things are things are good. You ran federally uh, in the same riding, Kelowna Lake Country, a year ago. Can you talk about the different? I mean, obviously, we have major differences uh, between that campaign and this campaign. What uh, what are the big ones that stand out? Well, during during the federal campaign last year, it was it was wonderful to be able to go door to door and and speak to so so many people and and hear their stories. But if, but of course, this time around, that's not as doable. And uh, my, my my team and I we've 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 opted to not uh, go door to door to uh, to reduce uh, possible transmission of, of COVID nineteen. Uh, so it's it, it loses out on that that human aspect in, in a lot of ways, which which is unfortunate. But we're making do. And I, and I guess being in Vancouver doesn't help either. I mean, obviously, I mean, you can come up for weekends, but uh, but mainly it's it's doing it virtually and doing it by social media. Well, exactly. And I mean, that's that's the case with, with anybody in, in this in this campaign, and unfortunately, but it's it's the times we're in and we've got to make. Why did you make the decision to run being the fact that you're uh, so far out of town? So I, I only ended up agreeing to, to run this this time around, knowing that the campaign was virtual. I like last 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 time I, I I really was was involved in those those human interactions, and that that's what what drove me day to day. So when I was when I was asked to run this time around, I I was hesitant, and then kind of realized, you know what. It's a virtual campaign that's less important, uh, and what, regardless of where where I'm sleeping at the end of the day, the campaign is virtual. What do you bring to the table for the constituents of Kelowna Lake Country? What do I bring to the table? I bring I bring a new voice. I bring youth. I bring energy, uh, and I, I I bring a different perspective. Like for for the last. 11 years now, uh, having, having Norm Letnick as, as the MLA, it's, it's been one consistent, uh, perspective, one consistent voice. And whether, whether or not one, one person agrees with that voice or not, it's, I think it's time that we have a new voice for, for the people of Konolai country. And obviously, philosophically, the differences between the BC NDP and the BC Liberals is, uh, is, is widely known, and, and you bring that, uh, that different perspective. Naturally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I like Norm. He's, he's a nice guy. I've had very, very only pleasant conversations with him, but at, at the end of the day, we still disagree with him on, on many, many issues ideologically and I'm sure if we were ever sitting next to each other in in the legislature, we'd we'd be voting against each other quite a bit. <laughs> but all in uh, all, all, I mean, it's it's politics after all. <laughs> of course, of course. Everything seems to come back to COVID right now. Whether it's health, whether it's the economy, whether it's uh, whether it's um, education, infrastructure, everything comes back to uh, back to COVID. Um, can you talk about? I mean, health-wise, I think I think everybody can agree that uh, that the three parties together have done a, a really good job health-wise. But the economy—that's where there's a big gap. Where do you see the NDP taking the province, economy-wise, as we uh, as we try and head out of this pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the fundamental the fundamental question with this election. It's this less this election is asking who do you want to lead this recovery period? And I, I, I see throughout this pandemic, a lot of inequalities have been exposed on a greater scale than have been previously. Seeing that, that divide between those at the very top and, and the workers, the, the people who were on the front lines, uh, who even just back, back a few months ago, throughout April, May, June, those people that were the essential workers 
but still only making minimum wage or close to it and just struggling to get by day to day. So I, I see this election as as being the being that question on on who we want at the end of the day to be leading that recovery period. And in my eye, it's important that that recovery is focused on reducing many of those inequalities that have been exposed. We know for certain that a number of businesses are not going to make it uh, out the other end uh, through the recovery period. Uh, We have more than a million people unemployed that weren't unemployed seven, eight months ago. How do we get those people back to work knowing that the jobs that they're doing right now, or they were just doing, uh, won't be there? Yeah, that's, it, it's always tough at the end of the day to be going to somebody who has lost their job and, and tell them it's going to be okay. Because for a lot of people, it might not be okay. And that's just a hard reality. At, at this point in time, I think our key needs to be making sure nobody gets left behind as though it was still April, May, June. And what, what I mean by that is focusing now on ensuring that come the first of the month, people can still pay their rent, whether they're employed, whether they've lost their job from this pandemic. And I think once once we're getting, getting through uh, to the later stages of, of the recovery period, it's important that we invest in our communities to not necessarily bring back those same jobs because that won't always be possible, but to bring back and to bring forward uh, jobs and job opportunities for people to be able to access and and find themselves in at least as good a foothold as they were before the pandemic and hopefully a little bit higher. So that means basically the province and probably the federal government working together with subsidy packages to get people through job uh, job recreation and 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 relearning uh, new skills or learning new skills and uh, and trying to put those into play. Of course, and I, I think I think it's been been nice to see some cooperation between the provincial and federal governments uh, throughout this pandemic. I'd argue maybe not enough cooperation in some areas, but. But by just seeing seeing that throughout this pandemic, we've had all levels of government sit down at the table and work together. Um, and again, whether whether they've come out with the right decisions or not is a different question, but just seeing that cooperation and that willingness to work together, I think has been a wonderful first step. Unfortunately, uh, as, as I've said to many people, there's no playbook for this and uh, you've kind of got to feel your way through the dark and, and, and hopefully uh, make the right decisions at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and I think on, on the provincial level, we've, we've been able to see a lot of that with, with Minister Dix and uh, Dr. Henry at, at the helm, uh, kind of, kind of taking, taking the charge uh, as to what to do. Because I, I think throughout a lot of this pandemic, it, it's been people sitting back and trying to think, okay, what do I do now? First, and having having uh, Dr. Henry at at the helm with Minister Dix, not above, but at that level with Dr. Henry working together, and and I think it's been been great to also see. Uh, see opposition parties working with the government uh, collaboratively. Norm Letnick, uh, especially as as the BC Liberal critic for health, working with Minister Dix. And you're absolutely right. There is no playbook for this. But once we're able to get all voices at the table, we're able to start working collaboratively uh, to see what is what what can we do now uh, to help for the recovery period. As we wind this up, Justin, uh, give the voters of Kelowna Lake Country your best pitch. Why should they put uh, a check mark beside your name, October twenty fourth? Look, at at the end of the day, I'm I'm just one of five people on the ballot, right? And I I see fundamental changes that need to be made, and fundamental ways that people need to be supported out of this pandemic. And I've seen over the last number of years, Norm Letnick has has taken a less assertive stance than than I'd like to see. Uh, and I, I 
I think that I'm the best equipped of of the people on on the ballot to be able to listen to the people of Kelowna Lake Country and bring forward the best possible plan back to our community. But at the end of the day, I, I just hope everybody uh, makes their voice heard and everybody casts a ballot, whether by mail or in person. I want everyone's voice to be heard. Justin Kulik, BC NDP candidate, Kelowna Lake Country. Thanks for this and good luck. Thank you so much.